Green energy is touted as the future if we want to stop global warming. But pledging a commitment to renewable energy is one thing, and doing it is another. So just over there on the horizon is Samso Island. Now, they are officially 100% renewable. That means they get all of their energy from renewable sources. So we're going to go over there and meet the community and find out how they did it. I've heard that the system the islanders have set up is so efficient that it produces more power than they need. Not only does this enable them to be carbon negative, but also to make a profit by selling energy to the Danish mainland. I'm meeting Soren Hermansen, who heads up the Samso Energy and Environmental Organization. All right. It's uh, Soren. Finally here, yes. Hi. That's Hi. Soren. Nice Russell. to meet you, Russell. Yeah, yeah. thanks for Good it. to see you. The weather's nice today. Beautiful. It yeah. is. Yeah. Electric car. Yeah. Excellent. He's taking me on a private tour of the island. So when they say it's 100% renewable, I mean, is that true? Like 100%? I mean, we still have some fossil fuel consumption. Uh, tractors are driving. We have combustion engine cars also still. But we export about 80,000 megawatt hours every year. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yes. There are 4,000 people on the island. And over the past 20 years, they've moved from a reliance on fossil fuels to wind, solar, and biomass technologies. From wind alone, they produce enough energy for themselves and the usage of 20,000 other homes. So why, why was it set up and why here on Samsung? Actually, the, the, the beginning of it was very interesting because it was a top-down decision. We had a very ambitious minister of the environment and he announced that Denmark would cut down 21% of the, of the present CO2 emission. Which was really interesting because I was the first person that was hired to do this project. And I remember the feeling that I was sitting down and having the office and I plugged in the, the telephone and I said, gosh, man, how, how are we going to do this? <laughs> the community here have come a long way and now boast a carbon footprint of negative 12 tons per person per year. But getting to this stage wasn't easy. People were concerned about the impact of uh, all these big inst installations on this little island. And to convince people that this was good, we started thinking about using the old uh, cooperative ownership model where people kind of buy in. They buy a share, a small share or a large, bigger share, depending on how much money they have, and thereby invite them to participate in the ownership so do you feel that I'm, I'm, I'm the part owner of the wind turbine, so therefore it's, it, it, it's because of me it's there. God, it's not if you get so close to these things. <laughs> no. They are quite imposing. I, why is it not spinning though? Well, this one is, there's a service on it. Can we go up there? Yeah, you can. Really? You want to go? Uh, yes, it'd be amazing. <laughs> well, of course. Right. Okay. being in the bowels of a battleship. And what they don't tell you when you're on the ground is it actually sways a little bit too, which is a little bit unnerving when you know you're 50 meters up in the air. Hello. Oh, there they are. Hey. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. OK, let's do it. OK. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Ah, look at the wing, ah, what? I'm in luck. The team are about to check the generator. Here, yeah. we'll look at the wind speed. Okay, nine and, and a half. half PM in the generator. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. So this is it. That's the energy, right? Yes. Generated. So you can see the uh, RPM. the RPM climbing. It's getting faster and faster. Woo! Yeah, can you see the power? 
There we go. Two, three, four, three or nine. So it's around 500. That's it. It's happening now at full power. Wow. Wind power is particularly productive on Samso because of its location in the Kattegat Straits. There are 11 turbines on land and more on sea, producing all the island's electricity needs. Oh my goodness. Thank you, that was incredible. But when the project started in 1997, turbines cost more than $1 million each. So 400 locals got together, most buying five shares costing about $2,000. Soren's taking me to meet some of the investors. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Russell. I'm Soren. Soren, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Soren, can you give us a sense of what's going on here? This is the big tournament. So this is, uh, you know, how the season starts. OK, so the little red ball is the pig. We're trying to get as close to it as possible. Come on. Go on. Nice. Competition's heating up. Who <laughs> is it Jan? Hi, Jan. I'm, I'm Russell. Can you give us a sense of how the community um, have responded to this shift uh, to 100% renewable. What really struck me was uh, the fact that people who didn't really speak to each other beforehand got together uh, and uh, and uh, talked to each other and had a you know uh, had a common goal to, to aim for. What brought you to the island? Did it have something to do with the whole kind of 100% renewables? Is that something you're proud of? Definitely. Yeah. Super proud. That's great. Is it Jörn? Yes. Hi, I'm Russell. And so how do you fit in with this kind of energy landscape that we've been learning about? I have been very much in, involved <laughs> and I have spent uh, a lot of money also. The first that was uh, the wind turbines on, on the farm and everybody could see that that was uh, good business. And so how have things progressed since then? And so three years later, I buy a half wind turbines on the sea. So yeah. you're not out to save the world. This is, uh, this is business. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> what strikes me is that everyone here has their own reasons for buying into the project. And ultimately, their investment is as good for the planet as it is for their wallets. But it's their willingness to collaborate on a common goal that has led to some ingenious solutions. I've come to the local biomass heating plant to find out more. This is not what I expected at, at all. This is the fuel. This plant is one of three on the island. All the straw here is produced locally and fuels a heating system that allows locals to spend 40% less on their bills than they used to. So the um, Arnhem is loading on these big bales of hay. Each one is about uh, just less than a ton. So they're going onto the conveyor belt at the end and they're getting dragged in. And in here, they're getting shredded up and then fed into a blast furnace. So uh, can you tell us, um, is it efficient? Two and a half kilo, half, like a little oil. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, what makes it um, green? For the first, so blew pengen på samsø i det her lille område. Før der sendte vi dem til nogle oliesjæger for olie. Nu bruger vi de ressourcer vi har i øvrigt, og de er betydeligt mere grønne end olie det er. The water is it? Yeah. Yeah. Water. It's surrounded. Yeah. The water heated here circulates via a network of underground pipes connecting to radiators in individual homes in the surrounding area. What happens to this the byproduct? This ash. They brought three percent ash a halman. Yeah. They're burning it. They're phosphor. They're carry. Wow. So the micronutrients that the plants need to survive. Amazing. It's really a much more efficient system than it's practically carbon neutral as well because the emissions that are created on burning 
are about the same as the emissions, as the carbon that's sucked out of the atmosphere when it grows in the first place. So it's a pretty neat uh, closed system, really. Samso Island's success at creating not only a green society, but a green economy, hasn't been lost on the rest of the world. And these days, they receive 5,000 energy tourists per year. So many that they've set up an energy academy. And so what is the big idea that draws people from all over the world? Yeah. I think everybody has some kind of intuition that this is the way to go. This is where we want to be at in the future. But a lot of places, they don't know how to handle this. How do we do that? How do we, how do we get started? And the meeting here is kind of confirming that this is possible. We can do this. Since the project started, Soren and his colleagues have advised 29 countries. Alexis, the project manager, has invited me to sit in on a call to a community organizer in Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Can I ask, what's the, the uh, most important thing that you get out of uh, communicating with the um, residents here on SAMSO? I think the most important thing we get is inspiration, support, and to hope for something better for the future. It's, a, it's inspiring. It. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we're doing. Yeah. So that's the idea, to help communities uh, realize their potential and their options and uh, fly. I mean, it's really quite simple when you think about it. You know, these guys don't have access to something that the rest of us don't. It's just the fact that they've managed to get everybody together, sit around in a circle, listen to each other, and just make it happen.